In the heart of fellowship, we embrace the journey of closer walking with the great I am, the self and all others. We are guided by the absolute principles of love, oneness and inclusion. Our affirmation of unity is a beacon of light for those seeking to deepen their connections, illuminating the path towards a more compassionate, understanding, and unified existence. For blessed are the peacemakers. We foster an environment where love is the foundation, oneness is the aim, and inclusion our practice. We believe that this way of existing will inspire a community where every individual can flourish in their spiritual walk. We affirm that love is the agenda of our mission, a divine idea that transcends differences and binds us together in the pursuit of the highest purpose. It is through love that we open our hearts to the teachings of I am allowing the grace of the great allness to transform us from within. Love empowers us to see the divine spark within ourselves and in every person we encounter, encouraging us to treat each other with kindness, empathy, and respect. Our commitment to oneness reminds us that we are all part of the greater whole, interconnected and interdependent. In recognizing our shared humanity and divinity, we dissolve the barriers that divide us, inspiring a sense of belonging and unity. Inclusion is our guiding principle, ensuring that no one is left behind or outside of the circle of love that is the great I am. We celebrate the diversity within our community and our world understanding that it is through embracing our differences that we reveal the fullness of God and God's love. Together in love, oneness, and inclusion, we journey forward with Love Walk Outreach Global committed to making the world a place where everyone is recognized, valued, and loved. We endeavor to pursue and live with the mind that was in Christ Joshua and all other love message bearers before us. In this, we are ourselves love agents with the mission of being participants in the great commission of sharing the good news that love heals and covers all things. It is so, and so it is. Amen and hallelujah. Hello, hello, hello to you and welcome to Love Walk Outreach Global and our spiritual fellowship for today. Now, yes, this is recorded. Um, We are putting this up as a premiere today because I am out of town visiting with my brother and about the time when we would normally start, um, there'll be a lot of celebration going on here, Um, celebrating uh, today instead of tomorrow. Uh, for the holidays. So I want to definitely make sure that I'm I'm here and present for uh, what's going on here as I'm visiting. Um, but I did not want to leave you without something today to feed on. And so I want to, first of all, uh, we're going to pray, but we are about to dive into a series based on um, the book that I am about to re-release or re-relaunch. Um, It is entitled, What If God is All of Us? What If God is All of Us? Um, And this is literally our love walk approach to how to deal with life, how to deal with social justice issues, inequality, uh, the lack of understanding and respect that we have for each other. We are trying to heal this land, right? Right. If my people who are called by my name, what's my name? I am, 
right? Um, there's a lot of names, of course, that go with God, but um, here we speak of him as the I am. And so we're about to start this series so that we can begin to open up the eyes of our understanding uh, to see God through a different set of lenses. Because when we begin to see God from this set of lenses, then things can and will change. Why? Because love is the answer, the response. Love is the solution to all things. And because God is love, we definitely um, put it all together, right? That if God is love, then love is that which has manifested in this earthly vessel, right? In order for us to use it, project it, and to come into harmony and peace. Ultimately, this journey is for us to understand that there's still a way, there's still um, um, a way to heal even from the worst of the worst things. Uh, and so um, I want to encourage you all today. Number one, there are a few prophetic words that I have to release to you today. Um, for those of you who are uh, partnering up with us, You'll have that information of how to partner with us after this. Um, but if you are also an intentional sower, which uh, to understand what an intentional sower is, simply put, you understand the dynamics of putting some type of uh, something in the ground, whether it be financial or otherwise, and then you want it to intentionally grow, right? And so uh, within this 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 realm of things, we will give an offering or something to the person who was releasing the message. That's our way of saying, hey, I appreciate you for being this vessel. Um, but also because that vessel is the one that is coming into agreement with whatever you need increase in. Um, so I will also give a couple of numbers that I was shown. And for those of you who are intentional sowers, then you'll know what to do with that. For those of you who are not familiar, don't feel pressured or anything like that. It's just simply our way of saying, I come into agreement with this message, with this word, and I thank the vessel who delivered it, right? We want to honor each other for our gifts, honor each other for our jobs, our skills, our tasks, um, and never make light of anybody's role, right? So the same way that we will definitely um, um, circulate funds to our doctors or our restaurant owners, or the person who created whatever it is you want to wear in your body. We want to make sure we also honor spiritual vessels as well. They don't have a clock in, clock out time, right? So um, we want to make sure we do honor that. And that's all that a seed or offering does. It just, you know, honors and, and, and gives thanks or gratitude to the person who has yielded themselves as a vessel in that regard. All right. So when I give these messages, if you come into agreement with it, um, some people may just say amen. And uh, but for those of you who um, understand the, the concept or even the principle of sowing and reaping in that regard, uh, then we already just thank God in advance for that, which you have contributed or will contribute. All right. Well, let's dive into it. So we're going to start this series, What If God Is All of Us, leading up to the re-release date, all right, to the re-release date, which is my birthday, July 11th of this year. And so we're going to start the series now, and we're going to talk a little bit each week up until that time about what this means and what it means if we change our mindset to God being all of us, if the affirmative answer, if there's an affirmative answer to this question, if we believe it within our hearts. Now, remember, if you're here and this is not something that you believe in or it's not something that you want to know more about, it's OK for you to dismiss yourself or to say, you know what, this is not my cup of tea. This is not how I'm going to digest this. Um, Bishop D.E. Polk, he, he kind of made something really clear for me. Um, when he talked about beliefs and people asking, what does he believe? And he says, I don't have beliefs. I have considerations. In other words, I consider things as possibilities, right? And I totally get that. Um, some people may be solid in what they believe, cannot. Um, there's no room for growth. But in that, yeah, it's a little bit difficult for you to be led into the all truth that you're asking for if there is no flexibility or if you do not leave room for possibility. And so um, if you are ready to consider the things that I'm going to be sharing with you 
Amen. I'm glad to have you here. If you are not ready to consider these things, I love you still. And I pray that um, whenever you are ready, if you are ever ready for this conversation, then by all means, please listen to this video and everyone to come after or every live. Um, so what if God is all of us is the question that is being asked for the sake of healing our land, for the sake of kingdom coming to earth. Right. Um, and if you've been listening to me for any amount of time, you know, we draw from the fact that like God is everything. The great I am um, is what we call God, meaning that, yes, we may use the pronouns of him or um, some say she, some say it source, um, ultimate reality, great intelligence, great mind. There's so many different words that um, attempt to describe the allness that is God. Um, but many of us have been raised to see God as a distant figure, um, kind of like this angry father that's up there in the heavens, wherever those may be, right? Because depending on which part of the globe you're on, you're going to be looking at your up, right? And you're down from your perspective. So that just also goes to show us that God is all encompassing. God is everywhere at one time. And so today we're going to start with this concept. And this actually may carry us through, but we're going to we're going to flow the way that God wants us to flow. And then we're just going to kind of feed it to you in doses. Uh, but I want to start with the fact that I am is omnipresent, right? So today's message is the omnipresent I am, right? It, it might sound as if it's crossing over into each other. You know, if it's the I am, then he's omnipresent. We already get it. But really, um, we don't all get it. Um, there are some of us who are at a little bit higher of a frequency, meaning that the awakening has been happening for a while. And so they've um, learned some things. The Holy Spirit has spoken some things. The spirit of truth, which Christ Joshua said will come to lead us and guide us into all truth, which means that we've only had bits and pieces over time. And we must settle with that, that there are just some things that we do not fully know or understand or can grasp. Um, we here at Love Walk Outreach Global, we do not worship anything. Right. Under other than the spirit of God, which is all things, we understand that everything else is fallible. Anything else can be either proven or disproven. People have arguments about things all the time. We establish our faith based on what we hear and what resonates with us. Right. This is what Romans 14 teaches us that literally you, you must be convinced within yourself. All right. And so in order for you to be convinced within yourself that you must hear, whether it be from your inward parts or whether or not there's another vessel, um, a unique expression of God that comes along to help you to see things um, from a different perspective. A lot of times we have these unctions and thoughts within us. It's like, man, this is like something I want to explore, but we don't always have the words for it. Right. I can come into full agreement with that because uh, as God downloads, you know, we prophesy in part. So as a prophet, I do hear, you know, as clear as I'm able to hear, but it's only partial. It's only partial because I am only one part of the unique greater whole. You are a part of that as well. And so we're going to talk about the omnipresent I am because or the omnipresent God, whatever you want to call um, this magnificent everything, right? God is allness uh, everywhere at one time, all the time, at the same time, omnipresent speaks to this. And so we want to kind of dig in just a little bit. I'm going to give you an acronym to go with this particular word. That's why I say it may take us over into the full, these full weeks, um, because I can definitely go one letter at a time, but I'll flow according to, um, yeah, how God wants to flow. Cause that's what we do. <laughs> For those of you who do not know me, by the way, I am uh, 
who many call the inspirational treasure. In this space, I am Apostle Shalanda Treasure or Prophet Shalanda, Pastor Shalanda. People have many different names that they may call me, but just make sure you don't call me nothing you don't want to be called, all right? Um, that's that's it. But here, here we want to just uh, go into this discussion. And if I seem like I'm kind of hesitant and, and pausing a lot, it's because I want to make sure I hear precisely what I need to say today. You understand? Like literally this message can go all the way south. It can have one topic on here. But if you don't really watch, <laughs> then you might miss something because we want to be able to say what needs to be said for today. The day that somebody will watch this for the first time and the day that somebody might watch this 10 years from now and they need to hear a message, it will be for the day that they're in. And that's what we want to make sure that we do. Um, to be whatever it is that the I am needs manifest at this moment. All right. That's what we're here for. So let's go ahead and pray. And then we're going to dig into this message of the omnipresent I am. So, oh, great. I am that you are. We thank you for this day and we thank you for this hour. We thank you for this conversation. We thank you for this liberty to be able to explore, explore beyond what we think we know. Father, we come unto you as a little child, refreshed and wide open, eager to know more about what it is that you are, who it is that you are. Now, we know that you are forever ever going to be explorable, searchable. And so we open up ourselves, Father, to be yielded to that search. Whatever you are or whatever is needed of you today, I pray that everyone listening to me will begin to embrace and to open up to allow you to be exactly that. If the healer is what they need, let the healer come forth. If the provider is what they need, let the provider come forth. If the mir miraculous master is what they need, let the miraculous begin to happen in their lives. Father, we know that there is nothing that you are not. My goodness, for you are all things at the same time, all the time. And so we give you glory for this. We give you honor for this. I mean, all glory. All glory goes to you because you are all. Mm, hallelujah. You are all. And we embrace you as such. We no longer choose to limit you to our own understanding, but we will continue to be palatable. We will continue to flow. We will continue to be fluid, understanding that when you speak, Mm, it's always right on time. When you reveal something, it's always right on time. We just yield to the growth. We yield to the expansion. We yield to this idea that you are possibilities unexplored. You are possibilities uh, uh, past what we can even begin to understand. And so we yield ourselves to that. See, our minds are not going to be stuck on everything that is wrong with our lives today. We will begin to throw all those things to the side, knowing that they will heal as we go along in our expansion and our growth, we are being transformed by the renewing of our mind. And we thank you for the opportunity. Hallelujah. We thank you for the opportunity. We thank you for liberation. We thank you for salvation. Whatever it is that someone needs to understand it as, let it be so unto them, but let them be free. Hallelujah. Let freedom begin. Let healing begin. Let everything that you desire for our final outcome, which is of good and not of evil, that outcome you have for us is of good and not of evil. And so we thank you for that. We thank you that everything within us that is broken is being repaired and mended. For you mend the broken hearts. We thank you that everything that we need to know, we will begin to embody from the inside and then begin to display it on the outside. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done in this earth as it is in heavenly places. As we begin to understand this in a higher place. Oh, God, let everything that grounds us begin to change and shift. We embrace joy. We embrace peace. We embrace love. We embrace provision. We embrace everything that we need. We embrace, we embrace, we embrace, and we embody. My goodness, we thank you. We honor you and we love you. 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 And as that continues to manifest in greater measure, we know that that extends to all that is because you are all that is. 
And we thank you for it. We thank you for this revelation. I pray that it will be deeply rooted in those that are eager, those that are ready to explore you, those that are ready to see beyond the norm. We come to you as a child. We come to you as a child, eager and ready to understand and to live in the flow and the joy of all that is you. Ooh, how we give you glory and we thank you for it. We thank you for it. And it is so. And so it is. Amen and hallelujah. Amen and hallelujah. We give reverence to the Christ mind manifested in Christ Yahshua and many others who have come in this earth to teach us this message of God's omnipresence and his love. This is the ultimate message. And again, everything that I'm going to say is going to be based on the revelations that God has given me. And you may have something different. Who am I to judge that? But as I have decided that I would no longer go along with the norms just to get along. Once I realized that faith cannot be something that is forced upon me or anybody else, we must come into being convinced on our own. And a lot of times that's going to take revelation. So prayer and meditation time, but also uh, the vessels, the people, the circumstances, the situations that we need will begin to flood in so that we can grow right into a better understanding uh, for ourselves because ultimately salvation uh and this uh this is not an arguable i'm not here to argue this point but again from the revelation given unto me salvation is not about trying to escape some burning sulfur in hell after your body has laid down right for we are spirit and they that are absent from this body is present with the great I am. We literally are spirit, which is going right back to the source of who we are, right? Full essence of God. And so this is not about um, the afterlife. And if it is for you, then still take what I'm saying uh, very seriously. If you're going to live for what's happening after this existence, then love is still the answer. Right. If you're living for now and what is happening in this existence, love is still the answer because love solves it all. Love answers everything. It covers everything. Um, and because God is love and God is omnipresent, then love is the thing that's supposed to saturate this place. The disconnect comes from when we do not understand that we are a part of the greater whole. And that the spirit of God or the very essence of God is housed in everything that exists, right? Uh, so we, we, we can look at it as the spirit of God within this body functioning, right? And we are feeling the, 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 the experiences of life and experiencing our spiritual selves at the same time, which creates our soul, right? The thinker, the chooser, and the feeler, the ones that's experiencing life, but trying to get to this place of peace and total sustaining power, right? We're trying to get to this place of liberation. We're trying to get to this place where we don't, we don't feel overwhelmed or oppressed by anything. In other words, Yes, I, I, in this flesh, I can be subject to anything, but I will not be controlled by anything. We get to this place where we understand that we have the power and the ability to choose what controls us. If it is the great I am that controls us, then we will live from the inside out. We will allow healing to take place. We will allow forgiveness to take place. We'll begin to see ourselves from a different perspective and set of eyes so that we understand that this is not about us trying to be God in its entirety. No, no, we are literally a unique expression of this great I am, this omnipresent I am. The God that is everywhere all the time at the same time, never separate from us or anything. All right. And so when we begin to look at things from this perspective, through this set of eyes, then it changes the dynamics of how we function in this life and among others. Right. So we want to make sure that we put ourselves in a position where we don't shun this idea. 
right? Because when we do so, we are back to limitation. Limitation speaks of bondage instead of liberation, right? Which is what Christ Joshua came to teach us. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus or Christ Joshua. What mind is that? The mind that thought it not robbery to count himself as equal with God. You'll hear him say things like, I and the father are one, right? He's coming into this understanding, this, 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 this knowing. He says, listen, I, I say what the father says and I do what the father does. And so he's teaching us that, listen, innately the kingdom of God is within you, that spirit, right? Love, everything is embodied already in you. And when you speak, you can speak what God is saying. When you, when you do something, you can do what God is doing. When you come into the full understanding or the salvation that you were never separate, you were never separate. So everything starts from the inside out. Let's look at Today, we're just going to give the the, the, the the bare minimum. Um, I probably will start acronyming this next week when we get live uh, back on Zoom or uh, wherever you follow. If you follow here on YouTube when we're live, awesome. Thank you so much. Oh, make sure you subscribe to this channel and share it with someone else if what you are hearing is something that you feel like can benefit another. All right. So let's, let's go ahead and dig into um, Psalm 139. Verses 7 through 10. We're going to use this as a foundation. Now, you may come here some days and listen to me, and we're going to use scripture, but we'll also use other sacred texts and words that were spoken by those who had encounters uh, with, with, with the revealing of God, right? All of us are on a journey to explore and to seek out God, to understand God, to understand why, what, when, right? And there are many of vessels who sat with this and allowed God to die, to, 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 to pour in and the revelations to begin to come out. So we'll use many of those texts. But I want to start here because many of you know that we uh, we are here and settled into the fact that Christ consciousness is the way, all right? And what that simply means is the mind of Christ, right? The way of Christ, the manner of Christ. It was embodied in Christ Joshua. That's where I learned it. I learned it, you know, by being um, a, a follower of Christian teachings. I learned who Jesus was, but I had to learn further um, that he never came to start a new religion it was liberation he was trying to give. But we do believe in that mind. We do believe in that way, the way of love, that love is the answer. Um, that that understanding our divine oneness is the answer. All right. And so I will definitely dig, dig into scripture because it's, it's so much that can be taken from it. We do not worship the Bible um, because we know that it was man made, put together. Um, but the inspiration of God was in it. Right. These people having their experiences with the great I am. They had experiences that we can glean from. And so we want to share from that perspective. All right. But we leave God as as our source. We leave God as the everything. Um, so that leaves room for us to, to flow the way that God wants us to. I often use the example from when Peter was in his time of trance and meditation and God lowers this film and says it has all these animals and things that were considered to be unclean. And he tells Peter to get up and kill them and eat them. And Peter immediately begins to go to, no, Lord, I would not, God forbid, because in his mind, if I disobey what the written law has told me, that I am in violation. But in this verse, God is saying, hey, don't you dare call unclean what I call clean. Get up, kill them and eat them. In other words, I am God. I am the great I am. I am the source within you that is leading you and guiding you into all truth. And so your limitations or your written laws based on your understanding cannot trump what I'm saying. And so we leave ourselves open again. Uh, Bishop D.E. Paul, thank you. <laughs> Um, you know what I mean? I don't, I don't have beliefs and I think I do definitely believe some things, but, I, but I, I glean from what he said. In other words, I leave room to consider all things. Because God is all things and he's all possibilities. So nevertheless, let's go to Psalm 139, 7 through 10. Uh, and it speaks this. Where can I go from your spirit? In other words, where can I go from you? 
to escape you? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. Where can I go from you? Where can I go to escape you? Where can I go from your presence? Where can I go that you are not? There's no place. There's no place that I can go that you are not because you are omnipresent God, which means that you are everywhere at once, all at the same time, all the time. Can I tell you that that means that that includes us and it doesn't exclude us? It includes us and it doesn't exclude us. It includes your neighbor and it doesn't exclude your neighbor. It includes everything that exists from the trees to the waters, to the mountains, to the skies, to the clouds, to every material that makes up these glasses and these clothes. Everything that there is, God is. That's why all glory goes to God because everything, every ideal, even the ones we don't understand, all God. And so we can either keep arguing that point or we can lean into the exploration on a deeper level so that we can go into the truth that we need for our lives. What do you need to be convinced of? Do you need to be convinced that this healing that you're in need of is possible? If you push through, you know, I've met some strong people. I met some people who say, you know what? I'm not going to let this get me down. I'm not going to let that get me down. And in essence, they're not really not letting it get them down. They've learned how to front past things. So they don't deal with the hurt or the pain because they don't want to go. They, well, they don't deal with the healing because they don't want to go through the uncomfortableness of it. The pain that goes along with healing sometimes. Somebody's trying to clean out your wound. That thing don't always feel great. Right. And so we, we don't often want to heal. But do you need to know that God can give you everything you need for your healing? See, I begin to, to share with 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 those that follow at one point that like God told me, I'm not this is not a miraculous. Oh, you know, keep praying for a miracle for me to hear your body type of situation. No. But what I will do is send you the information you need or the sources that you need or the person that has that strength. For your weakness. And I'll, and I'll allow you to learn of me. Right? The possibilities and the capabilities and what you, what you can do. What have I created that can bring your healing? Is there something you need to take medicine wise? Is there just a mindset shift that you need to have? Is it the meditation? What is it that you need to heal? I, you can explore that. You can explore me. In all things. I, I, there's, there's always an answer. There's always a response. So are you in need to know God of, as a healer from the inside out? Do you need God to be your coach? Do you need to be coached a little bit from the inside out? Beginning to go in reflecting on what it is that's ailing your life. The thing that you want to be done and over with so that you can understand what it means to live in peace and joy. And you're not just faking the funk. See, there's a difference. And, and here's one of those. And I told you I'm going to share the prophetic messages that God gave me for you today. And, and here, here's one of them. I'll go ahead and give you this one now. Uh, I definitely I wrote them down so I wouldn't wouldn't forget it. But this particular one was was simple, but very profound. And God simply said, tell them to get their healing before their pleasures. See, there's nothing wrong with pleasures. The scripture tells us that if you delight yourself in the Lord, he'll give you the desires of your heart. In other words, if you delight yourself in the understanding of who the great I am is, then the desires will begin to come and be made manifest. It's also in the verse that tells us to seek ye first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness, right? Or all of his right standing or all of your faith. And then all these things will be added unto you. So pleasures are not the problem. He gives pleasures evermore. Pleasures are something that we can enjoy. Thing, I mean, that's what we're supposed to do in life. I, I mean, I'm not trying to be funny, but one of the things that God did from the beginning of time is he made a, a, a system called ejaculation. 
right? A point where your body responds to the stimulation of sex and you have a moment of pure ecstasy or multiple if you're a female, depending on who you with. You know what I mean? I don't know if the kids is watching, but one day you'll understand, right? There's a pleasure point. There's a pleasure point. And I use that example because if you, depending on who you've been with or whatever the case might be, you understand that this is one of the greatest places of ecstasy ever. Having an orgasm or multiple. He created pleasure. See, he could have, if it was just about reprocreation and, you know, and, and producing more babies, then he could have made it where it was just a system where only the man had that particular sensation so that the, you know, the sperm could be released and it gets to the egg and the woman never feels anything. The man doesn't feel nothing. He just knows it's happening, right? He could have made it that way, but he made it pleasurable. So God doesn't have a problem with pleasure, but he wants you to heal first so that your pleasure, here's what he said, your pleasure will be, their pleasure will become your burden if you do not heal first. Whew. Your pleasure will become your burden. What do I mean? Those who have experienced any, say, for instance, you, you believe in plant-based medicine, you know, you smoke or you, you have a, you believe that drinking is fine. You know what I mean? You, so you have your, your drink or whatever the case might be. We know temperance. We're going to talk about temperance at some point. I think that's the last letter of, of omnipresent, but no, 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 no. That's the last letter in the book. Don't get confused right now. Just stay with me. I know, right? I was the one. Anyway, so so temperance is something that is a part of the fruit of the spirit, right? When we choose to live after the spirit, temperance is there, self-control. And so we have our limitations. But if you believe in plant-based medicine or you believe that it's okay for you to take a drink and, 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 and you are enjoying this, right? I mentioned sex before. Uh, um, some of you love the arts. And so when you're creating, you know, you you... You, you do, you, I mean, like you can go for hours and days and all this stuff, right? Well, temperance comes in to help us know how to use control or discipline. But when you are doing these things that bring you pleasure, right? And you are doing them from a place where you are unhealed. It can now come become your addiction. It can now become your poison. And so the word is heal before pleasure, why? Because if you're healed, then everything that you do will be done in faith, with peace, right? And you can really enjoy everything that you're into and everything that you're doing. But this is going to take you healing old things first. The healing process is not pleasant for everybody. This goes to plucking up old stuff, going back to childhood wounds, because most of us are still acting out based on things that happen in childhood. Pretty much everybody. Until you start to deal with those things. But once you go through this healing, once you begin to forgive and let stuff go, once you begin to understand like what this feels like to be attached to the great I am. And I don't have no identity crisis because I know that everything that's in existence is what God intended for it to be. So I'm OK with me. Once you get to that place and it's all I mean, it's all joy and it's all peace and it's all humility right? Don't mean you don't still go through life circumstances, but you know how to handle it a little bit better now. When you turn to that thing, that device, that thing that you may use to feel calm and better. See, there are women or men that come home and they just want to have that one little glass of wine or that one little glass of something. And it just takes everything, the pressures of the, the day. And they sit there in their chair and they get real relaxed. They go take a bubble bath or they do something that is considered self-care for them. Not overdoing it, just enough to say, you know what, Wusa? Knowing their limits. That's pleasure. But when you are doing it from an unhealthy, unhealed place, it becomes your burden. It becomes your poison. So I don't know who needed to hear that, but that particular message for you today is important. All right. Now, when you are dealing with God being all encompassing and, 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 and where can I go from your spirit? And we're talking about the omnipresent of God, right? We're talking about the omnipresent God, the God that is in all things, through all things. Then we understand that pleasures are a concept or ideal of God. It's intentional. God doesn't want you to be unhappy. God doesn't want you to hold on to the things that you haven't healed from. God doesn't want things to become a burden for you. 
right? Because we know to fulfill the law of Christ, we have to bear the burdens of one another. So in other words, God has put us in position to have certain strengths and certain weaknesses. We all feed one into the next. We all feed one into the next. And so once we embrace, God is not separate from me because God is all things. But what's so unique about me? What in my uniqueness do I need to discover about God? Right? You begin to explore the depths of who you are, what you like, what you don't like, the personality traits, all these different things. And then we begin to explore the fullness of who God is, not excluding no part of yourself, but embracing every part of yourself as a way to begin to fully understand the fullness of who God is. For some of you, this is going to be so hard to grasp, but we've read these verses a million times. We still see that as God literally being like this thing that's on the outside of us, standing next to us. Now God is there too. But we forgot to embrace the fact that omnipresent means that nothing is missing. Everything is incubated. Everything is in this greater whole and you are no different. To give God all the glory, we must lay down these limits that we carry. To really understand the omnipresence of God, we have got to see ourselves through different lenses. You got to stop rehearsing what everybody else told you in their limited understanding. But whatever it is that God has decided to manifest as through you, it's time for you to embrace that to the full and until you overflow. You want your life to be different? You want things to begin to change? Well, start with this understanding. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind in this area of things. You are not excluded. You are included. You are included in the greater whole. You matter. You are valid. And see, when you really begin to understand that you are valid, that God is not separate from you, that there is nowhere you can go, that God is not, then you begin to look at life different. I'm not a mistake. I'm not an accident. My identity or my sexual orientation or my color or any of these things, none of these things are by accident. They're all a part of the greater whole. It all has meaning. And I am valid. What if God is all of us? And you begin to look at everything through that perspective. That the omnipresence of God is what it is. The great I am is what it is. And that includes everything that exists. You are a part of that everything. So I want you to take a minute and breathe that in. Embody that. God is omnipresent. God is everywhere at once. And as I adopt this new mindset, Tearing down every paradigm that has come before. That God is somehow separate from me. So he's angry for me, at me for being me. Tear that down. God's love is absolutely unconditional. God is omnipresent. And because God is love, that means that love is omnipresent. And because love is omnipresent, that it includes you. So it's time for you to dig for it. Begin to search it out. And allow yourself to be everything that you were intended to be. All right? So if you're sitting in this place of condemnation and fear and all that, and you feel like you're not enough, and that it's not going to matter what you think or what you feel, throw that away. We're building on another foundation. What's that foundation? Love. Absolute answer to all things. Consideration of another. Understanding other people's needs as they understand yours. See, it all flows together and nothing is missing, lacking, or broken in God. So if it is in your life, that's because you haven't fully connected to the real of what this means. 
All right. We're about to dive in throughout this month, this upcoming month up into that time. What if God is all of us and we are starting with his omnipresence? So when we come back next week, we're going to begin with acronyming this thing so you can begin to see that 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 God is just not some some distant figure that doesn't care anything about you. Uh, we're going to start with his oneness, the O and omnipresent. We're going to start with his oneness. So we got oneness. We got omnipotent. We got omniscient. We got a lot of old words that we can use and tap into. So we'll start on that next week. But I want you to start today with understanding that there is no place that God is that, that, that God is not. Let me say that. I'm going to read um, Psalm 139 to you again, 7 through 10. And it says, where can I go from your spirit? Just ponder that. This this is gonna make you start wondering, like, do I even believe this? Do I know this? Am I am I am I capable of considering this? That there's no way I can go, nowhere I can go from your presence, from your spirit. There's nowhere that I can go that you are not, because you are within me. And everything I come into contact with, you are in. You are. Swallow this. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there, your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. There is nowhere that you are not because you are omnipresent. Bring the beautiful thing to consider. So get into considering. I want to share uh, these these messages that God has given me with you. All right, um, before I get ready to go and enjoy the festivities, um, I pray that everybody's holiday is going to be great. Um, if you are watching this years from now, then I pray that your day is absolutely amazing and that this message has helped you in some way. All right. Um, so so I gave you that message healing before pleasure. You do not want your pleasure to become your burden. The thing that you enjoy. Right. Keep temperance at the forefront of your mind. Um, that goes for those of you who like to eat like me. <laughs> that pleasure. You don't want that to become your burden. Right. You want to be able to enjoy what you enjoy while still having health in life. Um, if your thing is is arts and creativity and all of that if your thing is work if you just love to hustle and create do all things with temperance understanding that anything in obsess may not be beneficial all right the only thing that cannot be given too much is god and love you know because god is love love literally cannot be overdosed <laughs> against such thing there is no law all right, against hope there is no law. So just 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 be at rest and be at peace with this and let it sink on in. But heal before the pleasure. So if you are in need of a healing and you don't know what your resources are, then begin to ask God. Sit in your meditation time or in your prayer time and say, God, I wish to fully heal. Send me the resources that you would have for me. Send me the person that may be help, able to help guide me through it. The strength that I may need for this moment. The one that's supposed to help me bear this burden. Um, send me the book. Send me the messages. Whatever that you need to heal. Allow God to lead you to the right source so that you can begin this healing and be supported. Now, please do not be under the deception of the delusion that this is not going to be a process. Process. It is a process. But imagine the amount of years that you've been in bondage and, and, and hurt and broken compared to the, the years on the other end or the time on the other end of liberation and freedom. Imagine living in your pleasure and, and in love and in peace and all of that on a continuous and regular basis. Right. So you want to make sure that you, you, you just kind of count the cost and weigh it all out. All right. So for those of you who have been seeing the number 111 and the number 44, I have the prophetic message for that today. Um, if you are going to sew into this or give this particular amount, the information will be here at the end. So you'll know where to do that at. Um, but this is what 
uh, the 111 is speaking to me today for you. Come into the fullness of your oneness. Come into the fullness of your oneness. It says, give yourself permission to become one with I am. That goes into the message for today. Give yourself permission to become one with the I am. Jesus said, I am the father are one. Uh, he counted it not robbery to count himself as equal with God. This was not a boastful thing where he was trying to, to say that God was only limited to him. Because then that would make God omnipresent. Uh, but but he wanted to, us to understand what it meant. Coming back into the mindset of oneness. Give yourself permission to heal and to come to yourself as in this giving of permission you come into agreement that you are worth redemption that word redemption some of you are worried about your salvation if i believe this if i think this if i do this then am i really saved well can i tell you that all the muttering that you've been doing in the first place all the the hesitation and the fears and all of that those are not that's not faith right and it said that it's impossible to please god without faith why is this because you must believe that he is, right? You must believe that he is in order to take, you know, your life under control. If you don't believe that he is, at least that belief, right? If you don't believe that, then you're just kind of aimlessly going throughout this life. Then you are more double-minded because you're like, mm, I don't know, maybe I do, maybe I don't. And so everything in your life feels like that, uncertain, scattered, right? And so... The redemption that we speak of is not, again, the salvation that we talk about for afterlife. But what about now? What about the hell that you're experiencing now? What about feeling like you're separate now? What about feeling like you're not included now? So redemption is your portion, but you must give yourself permission. Okay, so you are also agreeing to allow the spirit of truth to guide you into all truth. This taps all the way into our message for today. Uh, allow the spirit of truth to guide you into all truth. You can't ask God to lead you and guide you into all truth and then turn around and say, ah, oh, yeah, no, nah, but I don't know if it's that. I don't, I'm up. <laughs> you got to give yourself a permission to consider. All right. Um, and if something doesn't feel right to you, it is OK for you to dismiss it and move on to something else. God continue to reveal. Now, I will say this, though. When you get introduced to something and it doesn't feel 100% comfortable, I need you to look for that, that thing in you that wants to know more. If there is not something in you that wants to know more, there's nothing tugging at you, you don't feel any type of dilemma, um, then that may, you know, it may not be for you. But if you want more, if you want to know more, even if it feels uncomfortable, don't dismiss it. All right. Take it as a seed, allow it to get watered and then allow it to come to full harvest. And if it doesn't fit for you, then then you can pluck it up and then start again. It, it really is that that it sounds simple. I know it feels complex, but it's simple. God is so much more simple if we really just allow um, this this leading into all truth. All right. So this is a bold step that requires counting the cost. This is kind of what Christ Joshua was speaking about when he says, listen, if you want to follow me, you're going to have to know you're going to lose some things. In this particular way of believing and thinking, coming into what they may call the mystical thinkings of Jesus Christ, um, this is about connection to the great I am, right? This removes all religious conversations for most of us because we were taught that God was separate from us and that we need to beg and plead God for this and that and the other. You know, we, we, we've grown up in this place where we feel like we got to beg the father to love us right isn't that the same sequence that we see in our lives sometimes but who wants that feeling everybody wants to feel like they are accepted and loved by the one they call father or mother or anything right and so we we put that physical attribute on the people that are with us but in essence god is all things so even if the ones in the physical don't show up to be everything we need god is still the one that will manifest as what we need on a continual basis all right so you got to be able to uh, to count this cause because it's going to cause you to think differently than what you would normally have thought. You would have thought differently that God is a separate entity. I need to, you know, please them and do tricks and, you know, all that faith pleases them. No tricks needed. No, no jumping through hoops. No performance. None of that. You are already accepted in the beloved. He made you. He created you. He manifests as you. Right? So God is good with you. 
God is good with you. But this takes a bold step. And so you have to count the cost. Are you willing to, to hear people tell you how ah, this is a false doctrine and this is wrong and that's wrong? Are you willing to go with the peace that you have within yourself? The liberation that you are experiencing for yourself, right? Jesus didn't come to start a new religion. He literally came to set people free from religious confines and bondages. Everything that happens should be happening from the inside in and inside out. Because God looks at the heart while man looks on the outward appearance. So within your heart, do you accept love as the foundation, right? Do you understand that love can heal all things? Do you understand that God is love, right? So when you know love, you know God. Do you understand? All right. So it's going to be, it's a bold step. You got to count the cost. But there's so much joy in liberation. So don't wrestle with yourself about wanting to be free. It's what? Christ Joshua came to teach us about this liberty, right? The fact that we have the, the powers and the strength to be able to do whatever needs to be done. Ask and it shall be given unto you. Good measure. Like you literally can have whatever it is that you desire if you believe. And so um, it, it's a cost account. Uh, you will be led to what needs to be t um, torn down in order to be rebuilt on a solid love foundation. So when you release yourself in this moment to, to just yield, again, we still talk about this 111, but if you begin to, to release yourself to heal and to uh, become one, right? To come back into your oneness and the fullness of that, uh, you will have to tear down some old paradigms and build on a solid love foundation. Love is unconditional. Love covers all things. And when you start building from that place up, a lot of things you're going to have to tear down as far as your old thought processes, right? We are being transformed by the renewing of our minds. So this shouldn't be far-fetched for us. All right. So you got to, um, you will be led to what needs to be torn down. This may be things in your own self. Within yourself first, it's going to happen. Everything is going to happen from the inside out. Um, so you might experience coming face to face with something that you need to deal with. You might come face to face with something you need to recognize, like your gifts, your talents, your skills. Um, you may come to face to face to, uh, with something that's still in your heart that needs to be plugged up. All right. Uh, so. So make sure that you uh, consider that you will see liberty, but you must be willing to see liberty. If liberation scares you, then take these words in. That I'm about to give you. Being born again is not a religious rite of passage. It is a declaration to your right to liberty. All right. All right. All right. All right. Uh, number 44. Don't be discouraged about what hasn't come together in the physical yet. All right. All things coming together. Don't be discouraged about what, what has not come together in the physical your work and preparation has not been lost. You have not been working for nothing. You are soon to see your final outcome. Uh-oh, uh-oh. This final outcome will be the start of your season of rest and ease, though, because you have uh, already been doing your preparation and putting things in, in, in its place. So you're going to be able to see everything in motion and see it functioning well because of the preparation that you have done. Um, you will have time to watch your work take on a life of its own. You have aligned things to function well. So find peace in the message that all is not lost. You have actually found your flow. Ooh, congratulations. Beautiful for you. Take a deep breath and be grateful even now. Whew, let gratitude overtake you in this moment. So take the time to look over everything. This is for your peace of mind. So whatever you've already put in place, whatever you've already been preparing, take time to look over it for your peace of mind. Everything is the way it needs to be. Any adjustments you need to make, make them very limited. Stop rethinking everything that you've done. Trust yourself. Trust what's in you. All right. If you need a second set of eyes, though, this is what uh, I heard the spirit say. If you need a second set of eyes, let it be the one that you are led to. Because this is not for everybody to see. All right. All right. You need to hear that message again. Just go back. Just rewind. All right. The next message, the um, last and final message that I was given was I am Jaira. I am Jaira. 
Jehovah Jireh, my provider, you've heard it. Yahweh Jireh, my provider, you've heard it. Um, so that's what the Spirit of God says. I am Jireh. Somebody needs to know that today. Somebody needs to know that there is abundance in the great I am. All right. So go within yourself first. God will begin to guide you to whatever is needed or he will in this season just bring it to you. All right. So have your eyes and your ears and your heart open. So as you yield to the childlike exploration of my allness, says the Lord, you will come to trust that the fullness of provision is always at your disposal. Children expect to have all of their needs and desires met when they ask and they are aware of where to go to get it themselves. All right. What they cannot see or reach, they simply ask and they still expect it to happen. Total provision is available. You must know this and receive this with joy and gratitude. All right. Those are the messages from God today. I pray that you're able to receive that. I pray that you've been able to receive this entire message. I love you just because I can. Now, listen, don't forget to subscribe here. Click that bell so you can get all notifications for when we are live. Share this message with somebody else if you believe that it'll help them in their journey to exploration, to understanding God a little bit better so that they can feel settled within their spirit, man. All right. Um, if you want to become a partner with us, I'm going to put that uh, up in a second. Go to coffee.com forward slash love walk outreach global. You can give your love offering there. You can become a monthly partner with us there. Um, for those of you who become monthly partners, we do have a monthly partnership call or, or live where it's just us. Um, my way of saying thank you um, for for caring, right? Thank you for understanding or believing that it's okay to circulate your money here. Um, yes, there are things that we have to do that cause money, right? Um, but definitely thank you in advance. Becoming a monthly partner says, I believe in your message. I believe in what you're doing. And I want to support that on a monthly basis. And so I'm grateful, forever grateful. For those of you who tithe here, a tithe is 10%. And what you're saying is to the spiritual place or the community where I feed, where I get um, my spiritual development, uh, food or nourishment um, or my, my self-development, which I believe is two in this, one in the same. Um, I'm going to pour into that place. And so you take 10 percent of what you gain and you give unto that particular uh organization or to that vessel so that they can continue with their lives as they continue to hear God on your behalf or on the behalf of whoever, whatever, whenever. All right. So you can do all of that at the coffee site if you choose to. Um, and yeah, get excited about that. Get excited about that. Whatever we sow, we read back. Right. And so pouring into someone else is not going to break us or hurt us. It literally says, hey, I appreciate what you are, what you are contributing. All right. So become a partner with us. I would love that. Um, we constantly pray for you. We pray for all of you anyway, um, but definitely want you to know that we, we honor that. We honor that. All right. So I love y'all so much just because I can. And I will talk to y'all again soon. Many, 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 many blessings.